Good weekend? Average. Did a couple of Vacus Vays on Saturday morning and then whizzed down to Chichester to look at a boat. You've already got a boat. Well, I fancy something bigger. Well, the one I've got is all right for peddling around the solar, but I need something more substantial. Besides, it's either that or give the money to the tax man. It must be terrible for you, Paul. What? Worrying about how to spend all that spare cash. Fortunately, it's a problem I don't have. Not with my brood. I changed places with you tomorrow, do you know that? <laughs> I don't think you would. Oh, you'd be surprised. All right, I've got a fancy car. I've got a place in France. I ski in the winter, I sail in the summer. But look what you've got. Yeah, a massive overdraft, a huge mortgage, and a clapped out Volvo. You've got five lovely daughters, and you're still with the same woman you married 20 years ago. You've got family, Duncan. You can't buy that. Yes, you can, with a massive overdraft and a huge mortgage. <laughs> look at me. Three failed marriages, a succession of females drifting in and out of my life. I mean, what is it with me, Duncan? What's wrong with me? Why can't I sustain a permanent relationship like you? Well, I'd say it's probably got something to do with that alarm clock you've got in your trousers. <laughs> Hello. Which mob is it this week? Uh, the cleaners. Hang on a sec. You know, Paul Collier, you're a funny old bugger. How do you mean? Well, for a money-grabbing right-wing capitalist, you've got a strangely generous streak in you. One does what one can. Right, I'll see you in the canteen then. As soon as I've cleaned Mr. Collier's car. You did tell her I wanted to see her immediately. Oh, yes, Professor. I said to come straight to your office. Well, where the hell is she? I can do without all this. You know, I've got enough on my mind. I've got a budget meeting with the hospital manager at 9.30. Oh, shall I call him and say you might be a few minutes late? No. The last thing I want is to be at a psychological disadvantage when discussing ward closures. Oh, while I think of it, check my diary. Arrange lunch with Lionel Snell for one day next week, will you? Book that Japanese restaurant he's so fond of. Breaking the news over a little sushi might help soften the blow. <laughs> right. Where is that wretched girl? Oh, shall I chase her up? Would you mind, Margaret? I just pray the Dean didn't see her on that picket line. I can imagine what her reaction would be. <coughs> Professor Stuart Clark's office. Oh, yes, Dean. Yes, uh, will you hold on? It's the Dean. She sounds rather cross. Find her and bring her here right now. Morning, Heather. How are you? <laughs> Yes, of course. Uh, I... Heather, if you just... Heather, if you just let me... Dean, of course she knows she shouldn't get involved in hospital politics. Yes, I have sent for her. In fact, she's here now. Now, just you leave this with me. Certainly. Yes. I'll make it clear it must never happen again. Right. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Heather. 
Come in. Uh, Dick, I'm sorry to disturb you, but could I have a quick word? Not just now, Lionel. I don't have the time. I'm very upset, Dick. I keep hearing these rumours. I've got to talk to you. Lionel, please don't involve me in your private life. Surely the person you should be talking to is your wife. What? What? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? This ridiculous rumour about Brenda and the head of catering. <laughs> oh, oh, that is just a ridiculous rumour. Well, that's what I said. They're both in the hospital badminton team. Of course they spend time together. They're favourites for the mixed doubles. I know. <laughs> it's marvellous. Yeah. Do you know how long it is since St. Swithin's won anything in the Inter-Hospital League? Fifteen years. <laughs> Brenda and the head of catering have put in hours of practice. I'm surprised at you, Dick, listening to malicious gossip. And that's all it is, malicious gossip. But I thought that's why you were upset. No. What has upset me is what I've heard about ward closures. What have you heard? Well, that my ward's being closed down. Well, that's just a rumour. I know. But is it true? Am I under threat? Lionel, we're all under threat. St. Swithin's is under threat. The whole of the NHS is under threat. Oh. I don't know how these stories start. No. Well, that's the trouble with rumours. One's always worried in case there's any truth in them. Quiet. <laughs> Give my regards to Emma. Yes, and mine to Brenda. Oh, when I see her, they're playing away tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you when it comes home to you that we're getting old. When you're going out with a girl and you're older than her father. <laughs> My God, that's a shaker. Well, it was the first time. I'm getting used to it now. <laughs> well, I don't know, Paul. Maybe it's because I'm nearer 50 than 40. I can't help wondering whether I've done it all wrong. What? The way I've handled my career. Oh, don't talk rubbish. Of all of us, you're unquestionably the best surgeon. Mm, and the poorest. I can't afford any of those exotic holidays like you and Dick. Neither could I, but as many kids as you. <laughs> I've never understood your interest in infertility. It's clearly not a problem as far as you're concerned. <laughs> Fortnight in Bournemouth is all we get. And that's only if my dear father-in-law deigns to lend us the bungalow. Well, don't forget, Dick couldn't afford it if he wasn't married to Emma. He couldn't live the way he does if it wasn't for her money. And let's be honest, we all know how he became professor of surgery instead of you. Paul, sometimes you've got a big mouth. Listen, I love Dick. He's one of my oldest friends. Good God, he'd be my best man twice. <laughs> <laughs> but let's call a scalpel a scalpel. If Emma's father hadn't made that anonymous donation to the New Wing Appeal, well, I know who'd be Professor of Surgery now. Oh, exactly. It was anonymous. How do you know it was Emma's father? Because they gave the job to Dick instead of you. If it hadn't been anonymous, it could have been called bribery. <laughs> no, no, it's nepotism, Duncan. Don't kid yourself. Well, I don't see how you could be so disloyal to one of your best friends. I'm just being honest. I happen to think you should have got that job. Anyway, I don't care. You're the one going through the male menopause and moaning about your career. Yeah, I suppose you're right. It is a male menopause. It's just, uh, uh, well, I wish I'd be more like you. How do you mean? Less dedicated. Charming. <laughs> you know what I mean. I should have gone for the money a bit more. I mean, Gerald Dean and the girls certainly think so. <laughs> they call me a foolish idealist. Or was it an idealistic fool? I can never remember. <laughs> so, I'm not totally mercenary, you know. My list this morning is made up of NHS patients. Which part of your contract? Exactly. I do my bit. It's not all champagne and caviar. <laughs> Mr. Collier? Yes? Your secretary in Harley Street rang. The Paraguayan ambassador is anxious to see you before he flies off to the States at noon. Uh, uh, sister, tell my senior registrar I'd like him to take care of my list this morning. <laughs> yes, Mr. Collier. It'll be good experience for him. This irresponsible behaviour will not be tolerated. You're at St. Swithin's to study medicine, not involve yourself in hospital politics. Gracious me, if this sort of thing had happened in my day, we'd have been out on our ear. I think it's important that we students show solidarity with the workers. Rubbish, they're nothing but pinko troublemakers. And if you wish to remain a student here, you'll be well advised to stay away, yes, Margaret? Your wife would like to work with you, Professor. Yes, put her through. Remember, the dean loathes Dan so much. She has the final say. Emma, hang on a second, will you? OK, off you go. And just bear in mind, there's a limit to how much influence I can exert over the dean. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about that, darling. Oh, Dad, hmm? tell Mum I'm not sure if I'll be in for dinner tonight. <laughs> Rebecca, remember, there's no room for nepotism at St. Swithin's.
She'll have to buckle down. She's failed her first year exams once. How many chances does she think she's going to get? Well, if she's anything like you, Richard, at least half a dozen, I should think. She seems to think she can just flout the rules. Well, of course, she's her father's daughter. One believes those stories Geoffrey Loftus tells you were far worse. And you didn't have the security of having a father who's professor of surgery. Well, I can't keep bailing her out. She's got to be more responsible for her actions. Oh, it's high spirits, Richard. She's a student. Look, don't you worry about Rebecca. She's a survivor. Besides, if there were a real problem, Daddy would deal with it. Mm. Now, listen. There's something far more important I have to talk to you about. Did you know that next month, Geoffrey Loftus is going to be 75? Really? Yes. We must do something. I'll send him a bottle of port. He'll love that. <laughs> bottle of port? It'll be an excellent vintage. Don't worry. <laughs> Richard, I don't think you understand. He's going to be 75. You're right. I'll send him a dozen bottles of non-vintage. <laughs> <laughs> Richard. You and I will host a gala dinner for Geoffrey in celebration of his birthday. I've checked with the Royal College of Surgeons and the Edward Lumley Hall is free. Be the perfect venue. Emma, I have enormous respect for Geoffrey Loftus. In fact, I'm rather fond of him in an odd sort of way, but I don't see why we should host a gala dinner. You really are going over the top. You still don't understand, do you, Richard? Knighthoods aren't just handed out willy-nilly. You have to earn them. At the gala dinner for Jeffrey, Daddy will see to it that you will be host to people who are extremely influential in the gong department. <laughs> God. There are times, Richard, when I don't think you're serious about getting this K. Morning, Margaret. Oh, you're early. Yes, all the lights were at green. Well, Amber, anyway. <laughs> Jeffrey. I'm sorry, dear boy, you caught me out. What are you doing in here? Well, this used to be my office in the old days, you know. Some days I still take the wrong turning and come this way. Margaret gives me coffee. I get here earlier than you, of course. I don't need as much sleep as you do. Well, you're very welcome. You stay where you are. I was coming along to see you this morning to tell you that we're going to give you a gala dinner. A gala dinner? Yes. Thank you, Margaret. It, it's something Emma and I would very much like to do in honour of your 75th birthday. A gala dinner? Yes. At the Royal College of Surgeons. Black tie, of course. Royal College of Surgeons? The Edward Lumley Hall. Edward Lumley Hall? <laughs> Emma feels it would be the perfect venue. Richard. Dick, I don't know what to say. <laughs> you don't have to say anything, except on the night, of course. We look forward to hearing one of your pithy speeches. Lady Loftus would have been so proud. How I, how I wish she could be there. No, oh, oh, thank you. Bet you never thought you'd see your old professor reduced to tears. Look at me. The ogre of St. Swithin's blubbing like a schoolgirl. girl. <laughs> 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 It's just that I'm, I'm so touched, Dick. So very touched. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, dear boy. I'll, uh, I'll return it to you, of course. <laughs> Gala dinner? Yeah. Dick's asked me to go around there tomorrow night and help compile a list of old students to invite. Oh, my God. Look at the phone bill. Mm. I mean, you have to say something to those girls. Honestly, Stuart Clark, gala dinner. Yeah, I think it could be a nice gesture. Gesture? I don't think they're doing it for him, do you? Ah, it's another of Emma Stuart Clark's self-promotion schemes. They never do anything without an ulterior motive. Oh, well, he'll have a marvellous night anyway. I can't see it matters. It matters because nothing ever comes from the heart with those two. Everything's so measured. They never do anything unless there's something in it for the Stuart Clarks. <coughs> yeah, well, I can't see what could be in it for them this time. Yeah. It cost a small fortune. Uh, wait until you see the guest list, my darling. You can guarantee there'll be some useful people at the top table. You're so naive, Duncan. Well, he's got the Professor of Surgery chair already. What more can he want? <sighs> Sir Richard and Lady Stuart Clark roll off the tongue quite nicely, don't you think? Uh... Hello? No, no, Melissa's at Woodcraft. Yes, yes, well, when she gets back, she's got to do her clarinet practice. 
Yeah, but if there's time, I'll get her to ring you. Mm. Okay? Thank you. Bye. And don't kid yourself, Duncan. Dick Stewart Clark won't be paying for all this. Daddy will foot the bill. Dick bloody Stewart hyphen Clark won't have to fork out a penny. Mm. Anybody fit the gerbils yet? Oh, I don't know. Ask Charlotte. Charlotte, have Dick and Emma been fed? No. <laughs> You're right, though. Will be a marvellous night for him. Was he, please? Oh, are you kidding? You know what your father's like. He was wandering around the hospital beaming from ear to ear. Why don't you ring him, then? Ask him if we can borrow the bungalow in Bournemouth. He'll say yes if he's in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> the Royal College of Surgeons. The Edward Lumley Hall. Oh, very nice. Hmm? Tomorrow night? Hang on, Dick, I'll just check. What time were you thinking of? Nine-ish. Duncan's coming. Between us, we should come up with a list of which of those students we should invite. God knows how we'll contact half of them. It's over 20 years ago. Yeah, well, that's why I need you and Duncan to help. Hang on a second, Dick. Someone at the door. Won't be long. Hello? Yes, yes, come on up. Sorry about that, Dick. Just had to uh, let in the evening's entertainment. <laughs> You're only jealous. Anyway, what do you mean, dirty old man? I'm younger than you are. Four weeks. <laughs> anyway, where were we? Yeah, oh yes, tomorrow night. Let's have a look. Now, um, I'm operating at six, so nine ish. Yes, that should be fine. Uh huh, yeah. yeah. Okay then. Look, Dick, I'll uh, bring some photo albums along, you know, help jog our memory. Okay, ciao. Hello, welcome. Sorry, I'm a bit late. You're not at all. Come on in. He had late with Dr. Snell, which went on a bit. Yes, well, he does, doesn't he? Uh, now, let me take your coat. It's so kind of you to offer to help, Mr. Collier. Please. Paul, OK? Oh, sit down, sit down. Uh, I find anatomy so hard. No, don't worry. I'll, uh, I'll go through it with you. <laughs> now, first things first. How about a glass of wine or maybe some bubbly? Oh, no, not for me. Not if we're working. Yes, yes, well, uh, maybe later, huh? Now, where shall we start? Mr. Collier. Can I ask you an enormous favour? Of course. My boyfriend's waiting outside. Do you think he could come up? <laughs> of course. Thanks. I'll go and fetch him. Won't be a sec. We ought to invite Joyce, the old matron. She was very fond of Loftus. Uh, I wouldn't. Might cause friction. She was a bit too fond of him. Oh. He wasn't, uh, you know, was he? Well, uh, not that I know, anyway, but um, well, my late mother-in-law was very funny about Joyce. We'd uh, better not invite her. Geraldine might not like it. Oh, right. Ah, Upton. We ought to invite him. Who? Michael Upton. You know, baby-faced chap. Oh, of course, Upton. Yes. He won the third year surgery prize. He ought to be on the guest list. That's right. The last I heard of him, he was a GP in Dundee. Oh. I'll get my secretary to check him out. Um, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, he and Geraldine had a bit of a, uh, you know... Uh, not that anything happened, of course. She was, um, she was very keen. Uh, I don't think we ought to invite him. <coughs> Geraldine might not like it. All oh, right. Perhaps we should have got Geraldine along tonight, you know, vet them all. But, I mean, it is her father we're honouring, uh, where well, that uh, Dick and Emma are honouring, so one has to think about these things. Oh, sure. Well, we don't want to embarrass anybody. <laughs> I never knew Upton was bonking Geraldine. <laughs> he didn't. Well, well he, he wasn't. I mean, that was half the problem. She was very fond of him. Oh, oh ha, ha, Paul! 
Look at all that hair. Oh, God, look at me. <laughs> I can't get over all that hair. <laughs> at least I've still got mine. <laughs> hey, look at those clothes. Oh, my Is goodness. that what we looked like? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't. <laughs> look at those sideburns. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Oh. Well, well, well. We thought we looked good in those days, didn't we? Oh, we did. That was a fashion. Don't forget, it was nearly 25 years ago. 25 years? Is it really? Yes. Oh, 25 years. Haven't they gone quickly? Uh, in some ways, yes. <laughs> in some ways, it seemed like an eternity. <laughs> ah, there's Duncan and Geraldine on their wedding day. Now, now, I took that with a nick on my father gave me for qualifying. <laughs> Eventually. Well, you can talk. How many times did you take your finals? I'd rather not talk about it. Yeah. Well, you couldn't have taken a more unflattering angle, could you? Huh? Yeah. How pregnant was she? <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Not a trace of twins in either family. <laughs> ah, now, she was a lovely little thing. What was her name now? Dorothy Sheridan. Right. Dorothy Sheridan, yeah. that's right. She was so pretty, so shy, yeah. and so quiet. <laughs> she never finished the course, did she? That's right, she just mm. disappeared. Actually, she and I had a bit of a thing going. It's a pity she left. <laughs> did you actually? You're kidding. Yeah, yeah. I think she was in love with me, quite honestly. <laughs> such a shy little thing. She wasn't such a shy little thing. <laughs> I don't believe you, Paul. You're all talk. You always were. Why do you think I've got a photo in my album? Good Lord. She was so demure, so shy. Actually... <laughs> Not you as well. <laughs> I don't believe it. But for heaven's sake, don't tell Geraldine. Don't tell Emma. I don't care who you tell. <laughs> Actually, we were terrible when you think about it, the way we behaved. Well, we were young, Dick. We were students. Oh, I don't think that's a different today. No. Hi, Dad. Hi, Rebecca. Oh, hello, hello, darling. Hi, hello. <laughs> what are you all up to? Oh, just reminiscing. Oh, my... Look at the clothes. <laughs> oh, Dad, your hair. Oh, Justine, come and look at this. Oh, my... What a bunch of wallies. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry, do you know Justine? She's a pre-medical student. Uh, Hi. Hello, Hi. Justine. Yes, yes, we have met. <laughs> Justine and I are on the Student Action Committee. Good grief, Rebecca. That's her. That's my mother. What? We were just talking about her. I was telling Rebecca she was a student nurse here. Dorothy Sheridan. Oh, <laughs> She's really pretty. Yeah. Did you know her then? Uh, vaguely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she was very nice. Actually, we were just saying we wonder what had happened to her. You know, she left since with them so suddenly just disappeared. Oh, it's a long story. I'll get you something to eat, Justine. Oh, yeah. Here. Here's Mummy. Well, she's not back from her committee meeting. Where's the loo, Rebecca? I'll show you. Well, honestly, it's amazing. That was extraordinary. What a coincidence. Just, honestly, Dad, trust you to put your foot in it. Her mum had to leave because some bozo made her pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you all go on about the swinging 60s, but I reckon your generation were a pretty irresponsible lot. between us. Honestly, you know me. I'm all talk. You said so yourself. Yeah, the more I think of it, I'm mixing her up with somebody else. Another Dorothy. Look, I think... Good morning. 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 Look, I think we're all overreacting. Why on earth should it be any of us? I suggest we just forget about it. Yeah. Yes, yes, you're right. <laughs> anyway, she couldn't be mine. Look how tall she is. You just said nothing happened between you. Yes, well, that's another reason. <sighs> You've got a filthy mind and a filthy uh -huh. mouth. I don't know how you can say such things. We play badminton together, and that's all. Brenda, darling, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm leave me alone, you pig! <laughs> Little Tiff, Lionel. Oh, I was sick of all those rumours about her and the head of catering. I thought I'd have it out with her. I wish I hadn't now. Who's for a stiff coffee? Yes, come on, Lionel. Tell <laughs> you what, send her a bunch of flowers. She'll soon come back to you. <laughs> Listen to the expert, three times divorced. <laughs> coffee, Lionel. Oh, thanks. Black, please. <laughs> And let's face it, Lionel Snell, I don't think you're in any position to talk. What about you and that nurse, Dorothy Sheridan? <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was over 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
this new series continues at the same time next Thursday evening.